Alright, welcome to Dent Reviews. Uh, today I'm going to be reviewing the Tanjima Darling. Tanjim Darling? I'm not sure how you say that. But this is another unit that Mark over at Super Review was kind enough to lend me, so thank you Mark. Nice opportunity to hear these earphones. They're very linear, kind of studio response type earphones, and he thought I would be interested, so he sent them over. That's really awesome. Um, this is the Darling. This one comes in at about, I think, $450, somewhere around that mark. This is actually a triple driver, hybrid IEM or tribrid IEM. It's amazing. I'm actually astonished at the build quality and the design of this thing. It is super tiny considering there are multiple drivers in this thing, different types of drivers even. It's got a six millimeter dynamic driver and that handles the lows and it has two Sony on balanced armature drivers. That's just crazy. It's got nice ear tips. They're wide bore. They're very soft. I love the feel of them. It's got really good specs. It's got um, less than 0.5% THD, total harmonic distortion. It's got 9.5 ohm impedance, and that's at around 1 kilohertz, I think. And then it's got 110 decibel sensitivity, and uh, it's just phenomenal. The, the specs are good. The sound is clean and neutral and the frequency response is very smooth. The uh, the cable itself is, I think, about, I don't know, maybe three feet or something. It's not very long. And 1.25 meters, I think, is the actual spec. But I'm in America. I don't know that stuff in America. It's like three times that or something. I don't know. Four feet, maybe. Anyway, there is the 3.5 millimeter connector. It's very tiny. It's well built. The stress relief isn't, like, mind-boggling, but it's probably okay. But it would fit practically any case on the planet there's almost nothing to it very slim the cable i love i really do like the cable it's not the softest cable i've ever felt but it's got a braided cable that's enclosed in this transparent sheathing so the plant it has more of like a almost a plastic kind of feel to it than it does a soft rubber but because it's so thin it's still very flexible to to wind it just has sort of that tendency to want to snap back you know like that which is just part of that, I think, plastic type outer casing. It's not plastic probably, but anyway, it has a nice midsection here. It says Darling on it and splits into two also single braided encapsulated kind of sections there. It's got a nice cord lock, which I like when these cord locks actually slide down and form a single column like that. I think that's kind of cool. And then the earpieces have this MMCX connector here. So it's very nice. I love the translucent plastic tidbits on the, on the bottom here, and the tips look nice with the translucent clear plastic. Very nice. I like the aesthetic of it a lot. I think it's a very nice, sleek-looking earphone. I kind of like this appearance where it looks like there's a post going through the other cylinder. It's kind of neat. It doesn't really do anything. It's not the MMCX connector rotates, but the earphone's solid. Now, one thing that's interesting about the earphone is the tips actually have two positions. This is called, they call them depth one and two. You can see that there's a rim there. Depth one, you put the earphone tip on and it just kind of sits right there on that first ridge. And then if you push it over that, you get to depth two. And depth two is what I like. It works well for me. I think the benefit of that really is that these could be pushed all the way in your ears. They're really easy to get deep. But if you wear them in a normal shallow fit kind of earphone way, this allows you to kind of change how deep the earphone is relative to your ear canal and the tip. So it allows you to probably shift that resonant peak that you're going to get with a shallow fit earphone. So that's kind of cool because it, maybe that peak falls in a bad place for you and you just shift the tip and kind of move that peak a little bit. I feel like there's a lot of flexibility with the tuning in this. It's not that it changes the sound drastically, but if I were to put these in deeply, I can put them in pretty deep. It kind of makes the sound a little bit darker and softer because it gets rid of those treble peaks a lot. Almost like the Edemotic, it's like it's bypassing your inner ear curve, your second bend, and it allows it to really kind of smooth that treble up, but it's almost overly dark. And as I back it up, that resonance starts to move that peak, and I can kind of hear that at certain distances it sounds a little peaky, and the others it sounds nice and bright and clear. So it just it's a flexible fit IEM. I like it a lot. I tend to wear it in position two and just kind of the general shallow fit, and that sounds the best to me. So that's kind of the build quality. It's a nice cable. It's a nice design. It feels pretty durable. It's very light. It feels like it's made of metal. I don't know what it's made of. It looks like metal too. Um, but it's it's a very nice earphone. I like it. How does it sound? Well, let's just jump right in. 
because this is an interesting one. As I said, you have all those different fit options there, and I'll, I'll show you here. I'll draw some pictures like we normally do. Uh, if you go to my new website, which I've been plugging on my videos here, dent.reviews, boom, that will actually have my graph tool, and thanks to Mark for helping me get that set up. That graph tool has all the measurements of the IEMs I've been doing. This one's on there. You can see some different depths and things that I measure. And basically what this earphone looks like on a graph, roughly speaking, from low, mid to high, it's got a slight base shelf like all the Tangeme earphones. They have just a little bit elevated base, but in a very neutral studio reference kind of way. The treble comes up very naturally. There's a slight, like, odd shape to the treble in the 3 kilohertz area. Most earphones like the Edemotics or the other Tangemes like the Han and the Oxygen look like what I'm drawing right here. They look like that. Well, this Hana is kind of more of a narrow peak like that in that lower region. So it comes up more sharply, I guess you could say, whereas the other ones are more rounded. Not drastically, but enough that it, it changes the contrast and the sound of that lower treble noticeably. And then what I found in this earphone is that there's a slight dip followed by a bump, and then maybe some more dips and bumps there. So the treble has kind of a bump and dippy aspect to it, but again, a lot of that is controllable somewhat by the depth because you move that peak around, which kind of smooths out certain areas. It's never 100% hump free, um, but it definitely smooths out the treble if you get the right fit with the right depth for your ears. So I'm gonna kind of refresh this graph a little bit so you can see it here better, but the base shelf comes up with a slightly more peaky area there and then a dip, like something like that. So what you end up with is a slightly darker character in the treble. It's not dark by any means, but you definitely end up with sort of those dips that smooth out and darken aspects of the treble. While the treble as a whole is still very revealing and details tend to be nice and sharp and clear and crisp, but it's hard to explain other than to say if you heard an instrument and that instrument stood out with clarity and sharpness, the shape around that instrument kind of drops into a dark, smooth tone. And that gives a lot of contrast and makes instruments sound very, very distinct. But you lose a little bit of the ambience that you get with something like the Hana or the Oxygen or you know, another earphone like that because you're losing some of that atmospheric tonality, the tone that you would hear from the room ambience and the reverb trails and things like that. It's not that these are drastic. These are relatively close to the other Tensium earphones, but a little bit on the darker side. As a whole, though, from low to mid to high, they're incredibly balanced. I think they're a perfect balance of bass, mids, and treble. Very, very good. It's just the treble linearity is a little less than perfect. Even though nothing stands out as peaky, nothing is harsh, and nothing is at all objectionable when I wear them, um, there's definitely some times where I want to kind of just EQ up those little dips a little bit to get that extra bit of ambience and that extra bit of treble linearity. So that's the main downfall to these. I will say that despite that, these sound a little bit more high def, a little bit more maybe, I don't want to say holographic, but they sound a little bit more 3D and more distinct in their instrumentation than the HANA does. I'd say they sound more high quality than the HANA in some ways too, but the HANA just still excels at the frequency response. There's a little bit more information in all the treble areas, and it's a little bit smoother and a little bit more forward treble, and the texture of the dynamic driver is just phenomenal. So in those regards, I think the HANA is superior, but in, in the simple listening experience and the way that instruments sound, if this is your guy here and this is your listening field, I'd say these may be a little bit wider than the HANA, deeper than the HANA, and if the HANA sounds kind of flat with the instruments jumping out like that, I think this sounds a little wider and a little more far away with the instruments being more distinct. So it's a little bit more hyped up in a little bit more realistic uh, separation in terms of where instruments are in front of you. Like it's just easier to pick them out. But in terms of tonal character, a guitar sounds maybe a little less natural. If you were listening to acoustic guitar on its own, 
It might not have exactly the same kind of string presence and character that the Hana or something like that would have, but it's still, in my experience, one of the most linear and one of the best earphones I've heard in terms of that studio type response. Despite it being slightly soft and dark at certain treble areas, the overall sound is still incredibly neutral, incredibly relaxing, easy to listen to, high def, great technical performance and imaging, and I really haven't got, this is a hard thing to, to quantify, but I don't believe that I've got any real strong sense of the balanced armature character. A lot of earphones that are balanced armature have a certain speed and decay and character to them that's very balanced armature-y. Um, these do have it to some extent, but when I'm listening to them, frankly, I don't really notice it. It doesn't jump out at me as plasticky or any of those words that you know people describe it. I think that the dynamic driver does great in the bass. The bass isn't as tight and controlled as something like the uh, JVC FDX01 or even maybe the EST112 by Dunu, but it's close. It almost has like a softer attack to it, like a little rounder attack, but it's not the mid bass. The mid bass is not bloated. It's very smooth. It's very clean, but just the quality of the bass has a little bit more of a soft round tone, just a tiny bit than those other ones I mentioned, but it's still very deep hitting. It needs to uh, hit sub bass, it'll do it. If it needs to get out of the way, it'll get out of the way. So it's a very good quality bass overall. It's just maybe not the tightest, most impactful bass. The treble is again sharp and clear and high def, but just maybe not as smooth and as controlled in the ambience as it could be. But overall, I think that they're a phenomenal set. They're a $450. Here's the challenge. Do I think that they're worth $450? Well, for me personally, that's a lot of money for an earphone. I know that earphones cost thousands of dollars, but most people aren't gonna go out and spend $3,000 on an earphone. They're gonna spend probably a few hundred dollars at the most. So is it worth your money to go up to something like a $450 earphone? Well, if it was better than these, probably. At this quality, I'd say probably not. As much as I think these are phenomenal, and if they are the sound that you like, and you like that tonal character, there may not be much better than these in terms of their design, their fit, their comfort. They block a good amount of sound. They have a clean background noise. There's no hiss. They're smooth. They're detailed. All those things are great. And it's hard to find something this linear and this quality in general. So for the price, yes, I think they could merit um, that, that price for someone that's looking for that sound. For me personally, there are much better options at the same price range, like the Oxygen, it's actually lower price. And then there's even cheaper alternatives like the JVC that even though I think these are better than the JVC FDX01 personally, because of that four kilohertz peak that the JVC has, and that's just, these I think are better overall. I think the JVC is a better value, much better value. They're half the price or less, and 99% of the quality. So, I mean, it's just, it doesn't make sense to jump up and get these at 450. So, I hate to say that. If these were priced at around $300, I think that would probably be more appropriate. So, if you could get a sale, check it out. Awesome. If not, that's going to be a very personal decision. But in my opinion, I think there are alternatives that are worth your money more than these. And that's sad because I actually think this is probably one of my favorite in terms of the physical design. I really, really like the fact that they're small, the tips are comfortable, they're easy to fit, they're comfortable, they look nice, the cable's nice, and it's compact. In fact, you can take this cable here and you can easily fit this into like a mini Altoids tin because it just, it rolls up so nice and tight. And I love that. It makes it compact, easy to carry around. So... With those caveats, I'd say it's a phenomenal set, probably a little overpriced, but that's a personal decision, and it doesn't really do anything wrong, it just has a little bit less than perfect treble, but I highly recommend the overall sound, and I wish that if they had a sale or something, they'd be a little bit more accessible to people so they could try them, but... That'd be what it is. That's what it is. So if you have any questions at all, leave them down below and check out my review site. And as always, thank you guys for watching.